And three, two, one. Well, hello there, team, and welcome to Friday. Now, on Friday, you should just come in at about 8.30, mark the roll, do some prayers, perhaps a run through the times, the tables. You're going to do whatever Mrs. Crooks wants you to do. At about 8.40, you're going to get to writing. Now, here's writing. The learning intention should be... Uh, that you will understand that textual forms vary, uh, vary based on purpose and word choice. The success criteria will be that you can list textual forms and features. You can use different word choices for different textual forms and you can explain how my choices affect the audience. And when we talk about textual forms, guys, we're just talking about imaginative texts or information texts. Now here's the lesson. You're going to discuss and brainstorm three textual forms. You're going to use a pro forma, which is in your English folder, and it should look like this. Okay, here it is, and it's got purpose of text, and it's got imaginative text there, and it's got uh, purpose of text, persuasive text there, and it's not behaving. You can behave now, good. It's got purpose of text and informative text, so you can work out... Uh, what the purpose of the text are. I might just help you out so you've got some idea here. For example, a, an imaginative text, uh, the purpose is to entertain or amuse an audience. A persuasive text is to convince an audience of a certain point of view. You're going to fill out that sheet in that sort of vein. You can do this as a class or you can do this individually. It's up to how Mrs. Crooks wants to run this. Just here you're going to write a sentence based on a stimulus and that stimulus will be a picture of a kettle and those sheets should be on the desk for Mrs. Crooks to hand out to you. So you've got that kettle and you might write a sentence like... The kettle was owned by old Mr. Bean. He was a silly man. And you can see that's the sort of uh, sentence you'd see about a kettle in an imaginative text. And you're going to have a different one in a persuasive text and a different one in an informative text. So you can work through that sheet. Thanks very much. When you've done that, I actually want you to transfer your sentences to the kettle sheet. You might want to develop those sentences a little as well. And I want you to talk about how the words and the sentences are different for imaginative text and informative text and persuasive texts. If you've got time, I want you to put the sentence in an actual paragraph and you can do that in your English book. I'd like you to take about an hour for that, see how you go. It's up to Mrs. Crooks. At 10 o'clock, you're going to have history, and I want you to work through on your history projects um, from 10 to 10.30. That's recess time. If you need to review what that's all about, ask Mrs. Crooks or watch yesterday's video or watch the instructional video I made for you already and put on the history webpage. Remember that is a group activity now, so you are working in groups in order to do that. There is a two-minute time limit on the video presentation that you will create. There should be plenty of resources on the blog for you to do that. Uh, if you're researching stolen generations, try to stick to the stolen generations material that I've already given you. At 10.30 you've got recess, then at 11 o'clock assembly and Mrs. Crook should hand out some awards that she's going to decide uh, who gets the awards. At 11.40 of course you've got Mandarin as per usual. At 12.20 you'll be doing sound waves and it's unit 29 I think. The teacher edition, edition should be on the front desk and that's got the answers in it so that's for you Mrs. Crooks and you should be able to teach from there and use those answers to help help you teach. I know I do sometimes. The focus for this week is the Z sound as in zebra and it's good if the teachers and the students can work through some examples together uh, if required but some students will want to work on uh, by themselves. If you finish early guys by all means go ahead with Literacy Planet. At 13 o'clock or at 1 o'clock is 
lunchtime. After lunch, you should come in and mark sound waves. That should take about 10 to 20 minutes. We'll see. At about 2 o'clock, I want your homework collected. That'll be your maths, reading and grammar all signed off. It should all be in one book. Have that collected and just uh, the books are open somewhere for me to mark when I come in uh, on Monday morning. Mrs. Crooks, any names of people who didn't, who don't have their homework here, uh, please do take those. And of course, if you don't have your homework here, you've got till Monday morning to bring it in. Otherwise, I'm going to be keeping you in at lunchtime. Speeches you do on Monday as well, guys. All of you. We're going to try and get through them all on Monday. We're going to draw some names out of a hat. So goodness knows the order. If you've got any extra time before home time, just down here, you can work on your history project. Now, that's actually going to be due in week three. That's going to be due in week three. So get cracking. And we're going to Canberra next week. So, wow. You know, I just realised we might have a Canberra meeting after lunch instead. So you might be able to do this work. If you don't do this work after lunch, so if there is a Canberra meeting after lunch, because the day changes and I'm not there, uh, then we mightn't get to sound waves. And if sound wave isn't done, we might just catch up next week on that. However, at some point in the day, uh, we are going to have to try to find a way to collect that homework and check who has done their homework and who hasn't done that homework. And Mrs. Crooks will be in charge of that. Okay, team, I... Uh, and if there is an opportunity to mark the sound waves work, well, please do that where, where and when you can. Thanks, team. Uh, looking forward to seeing you on Monday.